Hello, guys. Welcome to the show. Hey, listen. I'm going to go outside. i got something to show you outside. Now, the temperature outside, I'm going to tell you today, there's a gusting wind. The wind's blowing like crazy. I mean, just whoosh, whoosh. Uh, they call it, it says 70 kilometer an hour wind today outside. And uh, that translates into miles per hour, I guess, 70 kilometers. What's that, about 40 mile an hour wind outside? And it's like 5 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. And there's blowing snow in the air. And you know what? What I want to show you is, is General Motors. My car is a General Motors. And it does the most frustrating thing to me. I'm telling you, I got to show you guys. The only way to describe it is to actually show you guys what's going on. And when I'm done, I'm going to tell you guys a story. You know, I'm going to come back in the house where it's warm and tell you guys a story. So let's go out and take a look at what this stupid car is doing. Oh, by the way, you know, GM's done other stupid things to the car, too. Like, one of the stupidest things is the heater knob, you know. They put it where my knee keeps hitting it and turning it the heater down. And the heater doesn't work real good in the car anyway to begin with, you know. It's got a very poor heater. Uh, and, and the cars, this car's been nothing but a lot of trouble. You know, their, their older cars they used to make used to work a lot better when they had to roll up wind, windows and roll down windows, you know. And now they got power everything. And it's just driving me crazy, you know, all this power stuff. But we got to show you what this car's been doing. And why, what, right, let's go take a look. Okay, get this door open. Okay. Here we're out in the freezing. Now you can see why I'm not working on the truck right now. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. The snow. I'm telling you, it is cold. Oh, oh, guys, it's cold. I'm telling you, I'm freezing my ass off out here because of the wind but this car this car drives me crazy take a look i'll show you you gotta see this every night's the same thing you know and and, and it's i mean can't gm do anything right for crying out loud now you see you see Take a look. All of my stuff. All covered with ice and snow. And look at the trunk. Let me stand back here a little ways. Look at the trunk. Wide open. And everything covered with ice and snow. Thank you, GM. Your stupid car. And look. There's no... There's no... Look here, on here, there's no, there's nothing, no, they should have a key here, right here, a key, a key, we need a key, we need a key here, in there, no key, I hate that, man, I'm telling you, GM, you're pain in the butt, why can't they make a car properly, anyway, thank you guys, and now I'm going to get on with the story. Okay, this story takes place back when I was about 28 years old, you know. <clears throat> and I built two houses here in Nova Scotia, but this is the first house I built. And uh, I worked all summer at building the house, and I had, uh, we, we, my parents were, this is my parents' house, you know, and they, they were already living in the basement. So my mother says to me, she says, we need a well. She said, we've been hauling all our water in. And uh, we need a well. She says, I want you to you to build a well. I got the money. And, and, and put in a septic tank, too. You know, we didn't have a septic tank in yet in the house. So uh, my mother says, I want you to build it for me and do it for me. I got the money. She says, I got like $7,000. She says, you get started on it. So I said, okay, I'm going to get it done in the next month or so. So I started working on it. The first thing I had to do was figure out where I was going to put the well. So I marked out and walked around the property. And it was a nice piece of property. It's 2.7 acres. And it uh, sloped up a hill, you know, and there's lovely maple trees and birch trees and uh, nice tall trees, you know, uh, beautiful trees anyway. So I decided on a spot to put the well. Now, there's a neighbor that lived in behind us. His name was Bob. And Bob was one of these fastidious kind of men. 
you know, who basically minds his own business, but he's he's like Terry was in the last story. You know, he was very uh, protective of what was his and uh, expected you to expect to... to uh, uh, anyway, he was the kind of man that... Uh, that uh, good man, but uh, a man that uh, really uh, gets uh, uh, really nervous if anything's going wrong. The kind of man that uh, I can't try to describe it. The kind of man who regiments their lifestyle in kind of a military fashion, so that they have everything just so. Like they want to get up in their break, get up in the morning, and have their breakfast all ready for them, and know exactly where their cereal is. They know exactly what they're going to eat. And they have everything in order and everything precision and everything done in, around, especially when it comes to their property. They're very, very, they get very, very angst, very, very upset if anybody starts to do anything around their property or around their, around their possessions, you know. Like if you scratch their car, that kind of a person, they would just basically get very upset. Let's just put it that way, get very upset. Anyway, Bob was like that. So I lived next door most of the time. We didn't have any trouble with Bob. So I decided to put the well, you know, up toward near up because I had to get away from where the septic tank's going. They had a law that you got to have like over 100 feet between the septic tank and well. And the way the property was positioned, you know, the septic tank was pretty much in the center of the property. So it was hard for me to get adequate distance between. So I did find a place up toward Bob's where I was going to put the well. So this is an adequate spot. This is a good place, you know. So I went up and I marked it with a with an orange flag I'd made myself. You know, I cut a piece of 2 by 4 with my uh, skill saw and uh, sharpened the end on it. And I'd uh, wrapped an orange flag around and I went up to where the well was going to be. I walked up through the woods. Now, I was only about 28 years old. So, you know, I was pretty fit back then. As far as working was concerned, a lot better than I am now. I mean, I could do I could do that hard bull work, you know, and where your body, the kind of work where your body gets all hot and you can feel the heat coming off your body, sort of thing, because you're you're. It's I call it bull work. It's like you're really like steady digging and stuff like that, you know. But anyway, I went marching up to where the new well was going to be. Drove the stake into the ground, you know, and. uh and I was all excited because I was going to get this project underway, you know. So I went up with my chainsaw, sharpened my chainsaw, you know. And I had a nice little 16-inch Husqvarna chainsaw, you know. And I had it all sharp, the blade all sharp, so sharp you could you could cut your face on the blade. It was like you could have a shave with the blade. It was so sharp. So the thing would cut through trees like butter. And uh, I uh, realized that I was going to have to get an excavator in because now in this country where we live here in Nova Scotia, the wells are all dug, dug wells and it's clay soil. And so basically the well is a catch basin and you have to make a big catch basin and in order to make a properly big catch basin, you need either a really good sized backhoe or an excavator. In this case, I decided on an excavator. So... I'm our, I started my chainsaw and I started cutting trees. And I wasn't chopping the trees up in the pieces. I was just felling them and taking a few limbs off the top. So you can bring a tree down awfully fast with a really sharp chainsaw. And if you're just knocking a few of the limbs off the top, walking across the tree, you know, and going to the next tree and felling it, bringing it down. And I mean, I was moving. I I was bringing down trees and I was about a hundred feet up there from back of the house up to where the well was and I was and I was cutting a wide swath with these trees and just bringing them down crash bang and and the tree big tree would come down and hit the ground the the limbs would crack and crunch underneath it as it hit the ground and the next one I'd move on to the next one bring it down and the next one and the next one and I was just going tree after tree after tree. And there's a, a wake of devastation behind me, you know, as I was walking up toward the well, bringing all these trees down, cutting a wide swath for the excavator to get in later. So I went in and I was just bringing these trees down like crazy, heading up in that direction toward the well. Well, evidently, Bob was up there and he heard these trees go boom, bang, because his house is not very, just, just through the woods, just about 100 feet past where I was cutting, you know. 
So all these trees are coming down, bang, bing, bang, all morning, just crunch, crack, snap, and chainsaw flying, you know, and, and the fur was just flying, heading up toward the well. So I got up toward the well, and I got to where the well was, and I judged the area, and I started to bring all the trees down that I needed to bring so that the excavator could swing his boom around. you got to do quite a large area, you know. And I got it all done. Shut my chainsaw off, let my chainsaw on the ground next to where the well was going to be, and walk back to the house to have lunch. So I was inside the house, and my mother cooked me pancakes. She was good at cooking pancakes and eggs and bacon, you know, and uh, biscuits. She was making biscuits, too. Uh, she used to make her biscuits. She used to put them together, and they had a lot of baking soda in them. She used to use a lot of baking soda in her biscuits. Like, you could almost taste the baking soda. Sometimes there'd be little lumps of baking soda actually in the biscuit itself, like, you know. But I liked it. I liked the taste of it, you know. It was really good biscuits, you know. So I had a good dinner and put lots of syrup on my pancakes. And my uh, my belly was starting to get full, and I was starting to get warmed up. It was cool that time. It was in the fall time, I think, fall of the year. And I started to... Oh, I started to waltz up back to where my chainsaw was. So I got up, wa walked up the hill, up where all these fallen, climbed over like a few of the trees, you know, they were like crossing the way, and I'd have to, I sat my arse on them, you know, and, and slid my legs over the top and walked across some, some of them I was able to jump across, you know, all these trees laying down everywhere. This way and that way and every which way. Cause it's, like, it's like a forest, you know, and I brought down all these trees. So I got up to where the well was, and who was standing there? He's just standing there with his hands on his hips. And he was like looking this way and looking that way. It's Bob! And I got up there, and I said, Hi, Bob, how are you? I'm okay, but... He says, You see this? He points down, there's this one little tree that's been cut and been cut by me. He says, you see this? I said, yeah, yeah, I see it. I said, I, I cut a lot of trees. i got to put a well in here. He says, oh, that's what you're doing. You're going to put a well in here. He says, do you see this? Look at this. I said, yeah, okay, I see it. A little tree was cut right there. You know, a little, It was about six inches in diameter, this little tree stump. He says, that's on my side of the line. He said, you cut that tree on my side of the line. I said, oh, did I? He says, yes, you did. He says, and if you cut one more, it's war. <laughs> that's what he said. Quite literally, that's what he said. He said, if you cut one more, it's war. <laughs> Now, Bob used to go to the same church I used to go to, you know. And, in fact, he was what they call an elder there, you know, at that particular church, you know. And he, he's, he's mad. He's awful mad. Oh, and he's awful mad. He says, he says, how many more, he says, are you going to cut in there? Are you, are you going to cut more trees down? And I says, well, uh, I've pretty much cut all I need to cut now. I said, they're all down. He sat there for me. He's quiet. And he turned around, and he went marching off toward his house, you know. So that was fine. I started to chainsaw the stumps up into into uh, carryable-sized pieces, like 18-inch long pieces. I started cutting all these stumps up in a lot of brush, you know. So I was cutting all that day and everything, you know, up in there near the well and on the way back to the house. It was pretty hard work. I mean, that dinner that I had didn't last long i mean and uh, supper and i mean i was plowing the food into me you know i really i'll tell you honestly i really enjoy hard, like that kind of hard work i can't do it much anymore i only do about a few minutes so that really hard what i call bull work now and i i uh and uh it's just it just i get tired you know i get tired if i try to do that kind of work now but Back in those days, I could do that kind of work hour and hour after hour on end, you know, and it didn't bother me any. And uh, I wish I, I wish I had that kind of stamina like I had back then, you know, back again, but I don't. 
But anyway, I did all this cutting, cut up the limbs and limbed them out and everything and made stacks of the firewood out of them, you know, all these trees. So a few days passed. And I'm going to tell you, I got one of the best buzzes of my life. <laughs> if you guys know what a buzz is. So I hopped out of the house one morning there and there was still a little bit of uh, stuff to cut, a few little small things to cut before I get the excavator in. And I went running back up to the woods with my chainsaw. And it was morning time. Now, this is a few days later. And I started cutting this old stump. It was right in the way of where the excavator was going to come up in, you know. I started cutting this old stump, and the chainsaw was early in the morning, and it's kind of, there's kind of a bit of dew on everything, you know. And uh, so uh, I was cutting this old stump, and this final, one of the final things I had to get out of the way for the, for, the, for the excavator to come in. And there was a lot of chainsaw smoke. The chainsaw wasn't running real good that morning. It was producing a lot of smoke. And so I was away, and I had my head down there in the stump, and I was sawing away at this old stump, you know. And paying attention to the chainsaw and a lot of smoke and everything coming out of it. And uh, I didn't realize, I felt something in my leg. I felt like somebody stuck a pin into my leg. And then my other leg. And then my buttocks. I looked down. And I'm going to tell you what, my legs and my, uh, up to my waist and everything, was absolutely covered in wasps. These yellow jackets, yellow jacket wasps. There's a million of them on me, all over me, all over my face, all over everything. And so I started running. <laughs> I ran like hell, right? And I was swatting them as I was running. So I run all the way back down to the to the end of the driveway, and there was still a big cloud of them in the air, and they were all over my pants, all over everything, and I was swatting them and beating them and beating them with my hat and, and, and beating them off of my face. And I had to run all the way out then another hundred yards away down to where the mailboxes were before I finally got them all off of me. I'm going to tell you what, they got me good. <laughs> I think I, count, uh, I couldn't count how many bites, how many stings I had on me. <laughs> so I went back to the house and went back up the stairs into the house and I said to my mother I'd just been badly stung by bees she says oh oh you have I said oh yeah I've been badly stung by bees and I was upset you know and everything but you know what I don't know I'm a, I, I had more than 50 stings I think I don't know I couldn't count them all so many I'm gonna tell you what happened I got a buzz but a half an hour later, you know, I started to get like lightheaded feeling like and almost a little dizzy and a little bit. I got I got like a, a bee sting buzz, I'll call it. I got almost like like you do when you're on alcohol or something. I got like drunk from it. <laughs> so anyway, that happened and, and that was in the process, you know, but then we got the excavator work to do, you know. So we got we got the excavator. And a fellow was going to run the excavator. His name was August. That's what his name was, you know. August was a wild sort of fella. Now, the excavator come. A beautiful excavator. Back in those days. Now, that's, this is back. It was a, it was a, a uh, uh, it was an enormous excavator. And it was brand spanking new, you know. Uh, I think it was made by Hitachi Corporation. And back in those days, the excavator was worth a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know. And I mean, this was a nice excavator. It's all brand new, brand new air conditioning seats and everything else. What an excavator. And the fellow's going to run it for us. His name was August. August was a, another neighbor who lived up the street from us. And he was a little bit of a wild sort of a fellow, you know, at times, you know. He, he would... Uh, click his heels up in times he liked to dance around he liked to go to square dances and stuff like that you know and and uh, august was a bit of a wild sort of fellow if he got on that excavator and he went hogtie wild he was he was dancing on the seat and everything else he was so excited he was running that excavator and so he started to move the excavator up and and, and he was an actually a very skilled excavator operator 
one of the best, you know. But when he was operating that excavator, he was just like, he was, uh, I don't know. How how do I describe it when somebody is, is so exhilarated they don't know what to do? Getting to run that big excavator, that big brand new excavator. And uh, he was right on. I mean, he was like, get over there and get that stuff. Get it over here. Oh, yeah. I was just all excited, you know. He's really excited. So he got up in the where he was digging the well. And he was on, like he was on a ride at Disney World or something. He was inside that excavator and he was spinning the thing around. He had the, the arm stuck out, you know, and he was spinning it around and around and around like he was on a twirly ride at Disney World. He was up there <laughs> digging. So he dug this big pit right up near Bob's, up at the top where the, where the, where the well was going to go in, you know. He dug this big pit and he must have dug it. 50 feet in diameter size, right? And he dug it down about 10 feet deep. And then he rolled the excavator down inside the pit. <laughs> and then he started digging another hole down in there, you know? And he dug all day long with this huge excavator. Time he moved the excavator, I went up to see what he had done. He would shut the excavator off to go have a little bit of lunch. I went up to see what he had done, and I walked out. And I'm going to tell you what, the man had dug, he dug the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I've never seen such a hole in all my life. Honest to God, what a hole. <laughs> and the excavator was down in the hole about 10 feet. And he dug a big hole down in there below there again. With, it was wide, you know. Man, the amount of earth an excavator can move in a day is absolutely amazing. You know, this hole was the Grand Canyon. I'm going to tell you, if you'd fell off the edge and fell down into the hole, the fall alone would kill you. <laughs> it was so deep. <laughs> he must have dug it 35 feet deep. <laughs> he had reached down the excavator as far as she could reach. And, I mean, she was a big excavator, you know. And he had also dug the excavator down about 10 feet down and put a ledge down in there. And he had the excavator working on that ledge, you know. So it was a job. You had to have a ladder to get down to the excavator level. And then from the escalator, es excavator level down to the, to the lowest level of the pit was another, like, the length of the boom of the excavator, which is a big excavator. I'm going to tell you, that was an enormous hole. So he started putting those crocs down in there. And I think he put, like, nine of them, stacking them each three feet up, three feet, three feet high, you know. And uh, there was like nine or maybe ten, you know, of these crocs, one on top of another. And then he started putting a rock down in there and everything else. So, you know, it was quite a job. But, boy, what a well we had. I mean, it was such a well that a thousand gallons pumped into it wouldn't even fill one crock, you know. And uh, that well, you know, she never went dry. She's a nice well. Anyway. But to August, I'll always remember him on that excavator. He was he was really, really uh, on his tater water that day. <laughs> he was on that excavator, rolling up through the woods. He even let out a few yahoos! And he stood outside the cab of the excavator and waved his arms around while she was rolling up the hill, you know. And go, Yahoo! Just like a, a cowboy riding a bronco bull, you know? <laughs> Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.